How much further does this rally have to run then? So if you look in, in terms of an, an aggregated level on a broad index, I would expect still another 10% upside for commodities, mainly really driven by uh, the energy side and, and the, the materials. I think we do have three factors that do play for higher prices. Number one, the cycle. Look, we got all the PMI beats, and I think we continue to see very strong PMI readings. That's number one. Then we have for some of the sector structural drivers, uh, for example, copper you mentioned, um, so there's the EV story, and also on the supply side, we are challenged. So I think everything comes together to continue to see very good returns in the commodity space. Dominic, where are the supply side constraints most acute at this point? Well, I would say uh, clearly on the mining side, I mean, for the second half, everybody was looking for supply to gear up, but given distancing measures, uh, we have seen an increase in virus cases as well. Uh, I think the supply set is constrained. Um, I mean, we see that in the copper, for example, we're just looking at 2% supply growth this year, but also there are considerations, I would say, on the on the alley side, even though we haven't seen much of, I would say, challenges in the near term, there is more from an ESG perspective and China focusing heavily to curtail, I would say, incremental capacity addition. The market comes to the notion that, hey, supply is not going to grow massively. And I think that supports the story. Last point to highlight, there's not just COVID-related challenges, but there is also voluntary uh, supply discipline from OPEC plus, and I think that remains in place, leading to a situation where the oil market, for example, is undersupplied in the first quarter by 1.5 million barrels. Uh, Dominic, I wanted to look a little bit closer at the metals story, particularly if there's any specific risk you're, you're, you're looking at, and one that has been come up in our conversations here these last couple of days, is, is maybe that China might come in in some way to cap because they have flagged, of course, a few weeks back that input prices are a little bit disruptive right now. What risks are you watching here as far as the rally is concerned? Maybe short term. Well, two things. So before we go to the risk, I just want to highlight, we're looking to the upside risk and actually thinking that the, the mining side or particularly uh. industrial metals could see something upside of 15%. Now, downside risk, yes, if China obviously would see further credit slowdown, I think that's something to think about. The other element, if, if uh, the Fed will blink, uh, I think this is not the case. But if you're going to see here a big change, the dollar goes stronger, I think we could see here a little bit of a pullback. But I think these pullbacks will be minor given the trajectory of the overall economy. And Dom, we, 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 we just had Aussie inflation out. Uh, I'm just using it as an excuse to really look at the Aussie dollar because we had a little bit of a dip there. Uh, the reason I simply bring that up is you also look at FX. Is there any, are there any plays within the FX space, whether that's the Looney, the Aussie, the Krona, that might benefit from that other call you obviously have of your bullish on commodity prices? Absolutely. I think from our perspective, we want to be long the Australian dollar. I mean, I will look at 0.83, uh, a target to look into for the second half of the year. I think if you look at, at one stage, RBA needs to change its tone. And if you think about where, from terms of trade shift, where the Aussie should trade, we have much more upside to go. So staying in the Aussie, I even think the ruble is attractive. Yes, there is an overhang on the political side. But if you can weather that kind of environment, super cheap. I think that's something to think about. And if you're very positive on Europe, I think going more peripheral and thinking about uh, the NOC, for example, is something to go for. I will be a little bit more cautious on the CAT, for example, since it's so tied to the dollar and we still have a weak dollar view. So that doesn't necessarily lead to a massive outperformance versus some competitors. Plus, the Bank of Canada already is probably one of the most hawkish central banks. So not much to go from here. Yeah, Dominic, when it comes to gold, a number of investors have been left scratching their heads over the yellow metal. 12, up 3% over the last uh, 12 months or so, but down year to date. What is the direction for, for, for gold, do you think, in the next second half of the year, for example? Well, from our perspective, the, the point of gravity is down. We're looking gold heading towards 1,600. That's mainly related to the fact mm. that we think, hey, um, real rates actually can go higher. So we have seen a little bit of a pullback in the 10 year. That's not going to last. If the numbers come in good, across the globe, you would see the nominal going up and it would break even already quite high. I think I would see a lot of transmission into real rates and investment demand simply not there. I know we have seen the outflows a little bit stabilizing, but I need inflows. If I don't get that one, it's very difficult for gold to hold levels close to 1,800. Uh, Dominic, 
best leading indicator for commodities, whether that's, 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 that's base metals, precious metals, what is it? Well, we do look on the more fundamental side. We look at the ISM, we look at the PMIs. I wouldn't say leading, but I think they are coincident indicators. Mm. I think the equity gives you normally a little bit more forward-looking guidance since here people look more on terms of expectations. Commodities still live a lot from the now, what is actual demand doing? So looking at two things, what is the equity market doing? Number one, number two, what are basically the cyclical story? That is, I think, one of the key drivers you need to think about.